Hey everyone, so I've kind of neglected my two and a half men reviews recently so I thought it's about time that I did another one and this is going to be about episode 9 of the first season, phase 1 complete which aired on the 17th of November 2003 uh, and just briefly I want to say I will not be doing a video about Charlie Sheen I did one about Charlie oh, about half a year ago when, he, when things first started to really get quite bad for him and, and in that video I said that I I still support him in a way because we all do things that we regret, regret. We all have those times in our life where we do things that the year after we're thinking, what on earth was I doing? And at the end of the day, he's still human. If he needs help, he needs help. Sometimes it's not always going to be his fault. And I know even just me saying that is going to get a lot of hate or comments. But I'm not going to do a big video about it. I tweet a few things about it and even then people are like, Amy, shut up. So, you know, you don't have to respect my opinion. I wish you would at least respect my opinion and say, right, I don't agree, but fine. But I'm not I'm not going to be doing a big video about it. And so today I'm just focusing on this episode and there are two main, main plots. The first one involves Alan and Rose and the second one involves Charlie, Jake and Charlie's then current girlfriend. Um, so, first of all, the brief little plot with Alan and Rose. They start to play Scrabble, which is super fun because I find Scrabble quite an, a really interesting game and quite a bizarre topic for a comedy but it works really well and when Charlie's sort of worrying that they're going to get closer and you know the viewers at home are sitting going Alan and Rose? Alan and Charlie Stalker? Is that really something that's going to work? Are we really going to be able to follow this and connect with this and understand this properly? And of course I'm not going to actually say how it unfolds in case you haven't seen the episode and you're watching this to see if it's worth watching which it is um, but it's quite interesting how that happens and in the episodes to follow and even um, in a couple of seasons later how things sort of go back to that slightly and it's it's quite nice and then of course you have Charlie jump, dumps his then girlfriend Wendy and Jake adored Wendy Evelyn liked Wendy everybody liked Wendy she seemed like the perfect girlfriend but she was turning this relationship she had with Charlie into a proper relationship rather than just a casual thing and that scares Charlie we all know Charlie has commitment issues so for him to have this almost serious relationship with this girl is a bit frightful for him so he ends up dumping her and saying look you know can't cope goodbye but, you know Jake's heartbroken Evelyn's like what did you go and do that for everyone's totally just astounded that Charlie has just got rid of this really great thing that he had with her and then of course is the whole will he get her back or is that the end of Wendy how's that going to unfold will Charlie ever commit to a relationship um, obviously if you know the later seasons you will know what happens there but again I'm not going to say the outcome of that in case you've not yet seen it so I really do like this episode I don't think as far as humour goes it's not one which makes me like roll on the floor with laughter you know I'm not like nearly wetting myself with laughter or anything but it is it, it does have its funny moments but I find that it's more more like you, you discover more about the characters and obviously we're only nine episodes into the season so we don't completely know everything there is to know about the characters at this point um, obviously we never really do know everything there is to know but we do start to learn a bit more and obviously the whole the Alan and Rose thing I really like that because it's something new and it's bringing two characters which we know and love and sort of intertwining them in a new way and seeing how that works could have been possibly experimental for the crew as well not just the viewers at home Directed by Andy Ackerman, who is, has directed so many of them. You guys know my all-time favourite director is Gary Hoverson, and he has worked on Two and a Half Men. So naturally, most of my favourite Two and a Half Men episodes are directed by Hoverson, but Andy Ackerman is definitely my second favourite Two and a Half Men director. So, you know, there's not a problem with that. Um, absolutely fantastic cast. Sorry, I'm yawning again. Sorry. I'm obviously Charlie Sheen as... Charlie, um, again I'm not going to really touch upon that but I do adore him and I think he's a fantastic actor John Cryer um, as Alan and Angus T. Jones as Jake then you have Mindy Christ I think that's how you pronounce her surname as Wendy, not an actress I'm actually familiar with, I haven't seen her in anything else I'm going to see if I can find if she's in anything else because she is a really good actress um, so she's definitely one to look out for but yeah, it's just a really really great episode I find that a lot of the season 1 ones get a bit tiresome I think the season one box set is the one that I've watched the most because obviously I had that one and I watched it over and over and over and over until I bought the second one and then once I'd watched all of them up to whatever I had I started from the beginning again so I've only seen season one the most so I've kind of starting to wear those discs a little bit thin 
but even when I do watch this one every time it gets, you know, I really do like it. Uh, but yeah, so please feel free to leave comments and let me know your thoughts on this episode or anything else to do with Two and a Half Men. As usual, 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 requests are always warmly welcome, so please feel free to let me know those. But that is it for this video, so I will see you next time. Bye!